greetings to you all from this part of Africa, Nigeria. Africans recently have been very concerned about the general state of things, from bad leadership system to complacent followership. Poverty and insecurity have become the two monster twins chasing many Africans out of the continent that is globally recognized as the wealthiest continent in terms of mineral reserves. Africa holds around 30% of the world's known mineral reserves, including cobalt, uranium, diamond and gold, as well as significant oil and gas reserves. My name is Pelumi Polari, and you are on to Arise Africa Chat Show. Today we'll be talking about the role of youth in the reformation of Africa. And to better understand the topic, I shall be engaging Prince Olumide Olubenle. Prince Olubenle is a lead pastor at Rehoboth International Christian Center. The convener inspiring initiatives, founder Rema Business School. Prince Olubenle studied executive MBA at Lagos Business School. He is a transformational leadership expert of repute, who is as well a key facilitator with Institute for National Transformation. Above all, let me introduce him in my own way. Prince Olubele is the leader of leaders. Please feel welcome, sir. We Thank you. Thank you so we are much. so privileged to have you. We are so privileged to have you. Thank ah. you so much, Kwelumi Falari. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I trust God that because of this and every other initiative going on all over the world concerning Africa, that Africa will be transformed. Africa will be transformed. Thank you for allowing me to contribute. Amen. Amen. This is the maiden edition, and we are privileged to have you here again, sir. Wow. Exciting. I think we should just we should just start straight because we know you are very engaged and <laughs> we should just start straight. The first question I would like to ask you, Prince, is who is the youth? Is there any age bracket? I think we need to define youth. And if you can bring the two together, youth and reformation. But please help us define the two words separately, sir. Okay, so for all our viewers out there, you would um, please allow me be myself. I, I, I don't take the opportunity lightly and I do not know why I am going to be the first speaker uh, on this program. Um, but I have had experiences and encounters from God and I do know that there are definitions out there. But for my purpose, for my own working purpose, I will be looking at people that are 40 and below. My definition of youth will be 40 and below, where we will remove uh, children and all of that. So I probably will be talking about people between the ages of 16 and 40. For me, that that would be what I would consider uh, the youth of Africa, because at 16, people are already getting into all sorts of vices and crime. If they can operate in the negative zone, they can as well operate in the very positive zone. Uh, once you climb to 40, uh, you get into the age of mentors and coaches, so I will exclude people from, from that. Now, you've spoken about reformation. Reformation, according to the Englishman who owns the language, says okay. it's, to, it's to return to form. Reform. Return to form. So there was a form that you are returning to. Uh, but I would think that uh, if Africa has any form to return to, it is so way in the past that it might not be relevant going into the future. So I would rather say for the purposes of understanding and engagement, we should look at another word, transformation. Transformation means to change form. And uh, so uh, it's from the other word metamorphosis, metamorpho to change form. So you cannot link the end picture with the start picture. If you look at uh, God as a scientist, I like to look at God as the chief scientist uh, 
and the chief practitioner of all industries he started with darkness chaos and mass but he ended up with the garden of Eden that had gold in it i don't know whether i tell you you like a garden that has gold in it <laughs> yeah that's that's the kind of garden that god made there was no need for washing there was no need for cooking and everything was just bright there were animals in the garden I mean, it was a big zoo, big botanical garden. It was just a beautiful place. So you cannot, that's transformation, okay? So Africa needs to go through transformation. And the bottom line here is that the minds that have created the problems or the minds that have tolerated the problems was still the minds that have celebrated the problems is not in a position to alter the situation okay. so according to the law of physics the first law of motion anybody will stay in a state of rest so let me bring it to nigeria should we talk nigeria or talk africa okay let's talk africa africa will stay in its current state or continue on its present trajectory until it is impacted by an external force the force that will impact on it to change directory or increase momentum must be external to it. So the minds that have created this problem, people that are 40 and above, they may not have created the problem, but we have tolerated the problem and we are making the best we can living with the problem. So the same way people say, oh, this is my headache or oh, this is my migraine or oh, this is my dysmenorrhea. We also have settled with this my Nigeria, this my Africa. What we need right now is a radical departure. And if you notice at the Gen Z, their culture is to query everything. They question everything. And they, dis they, 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 they I don't want to use the word disdain, but they cannot tolerate and stand for status quo. They, is, they are a generation that wants to redefine. They are a generation that wants to chart their own path. I mean, somebody was discussing the other day, one of the social media people uh, 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 platform, that this generation is a generation that says, I don't want to work nine to five. <laughs> Say, you know what, I mean, just tell me what you want me to do. Leave it to me, I will go and sort it out. So they are breaking all the rules, but they are delivering. That is why if Africa will become reckoned with as a transformed continent it transformed people i really believe that people that are 40 and below should be the ones to drive the whole process there are a few other things we can say but let me hear your questions and, and speak to your questions so that i stay on course fantastic sir thank you very very much all right um okay before i ask the next question friends kindly share this particular video through your own platforms you can host a party via Facebook Instagram yeah um, just do your best let's broadcast this this is what we need to live for now enough of entertainment you know the people ruling house they are so deliberate about it because they don't want us to think you can't be dancing and be thinking you dance and you laugh and you forget all you are going through so yeah while I'm not saying let's throw away entertainment we need to get serious at this point well so I'm glad I'm not 40 yet, so um, <laughs> I'm still within the bracket. So, um, so now let's just go straight. You have the floor fully now. What is the role of youth in the reformation of Africa? Okay. Just flow at your own pace and enjoy yourself for the next 15 minutes or so. Sir. Thank you so much. I'm so not the going role to interrupt of you. you. So, no, no, not a problem. Thank you so much. Okay. Everybody, please share this. Um, the role of youth in transformation of Africa. That's what I mean. Transformation. Do. All right. Transformation. Okay. Right. So we must keep on improving on a daily basis. It's leadership. Let me recap. The role of the youth in the transformation of Africa is leadership. A leader is a person who has formal authority to occupy a position to discharge a role. But people that are occupying that position today 
are not discharging that responsibility to the best of our requirement. They may be doing to the best of their ability, that doesn't cut it. We are not looking for people that will do all they can do. No. Good to great says people who lead excellent organizations who witness radical transformation are people who do all that needs to be done. In other words, when all that needs to be done is beyond you, you either stretch or you find ways and means of bringing it on board. Either you buy the skill or you go and retool yourself. Okay, so we are not looking for retired and tired people who have recycled themselves over the years. If I look at Nigeria as a case study, Nigeria was doing well pretty much till when the military boys came in. And when the military boys came in, they turned everything into a unitary system. Everybody go to Abuja, then it was the Dan Barracks to queue up to get whatever you want. Okay. You can look at the exclusive list. It has everything in there. And the other things that states and local governments can do is just pretty, pretty small. Now, those boys, I call them the khaki boys or the military boys. They, they have offered leadership at various levels of their career. They started as captains then they became majors then they became lieutenant colonels then they became generals. Now they are retired in Agbada. They are still the same faces. When I was uni in university in the 80s, Buhari was there. Now my children are in the university. Buhari is still there. Okay. It is still the same tired old ideas that we are recycling as it is in the federal, so it is at the state level, so it is at the local government. Now it's not only political. There are seven spheres at a minimum that every nation should focus on. The chief of those spheres is the social or family because that is where the young child is born. The next fear that begins to influence that child is the religious mountain, depending on the faith of their parents or predominant in their culture. The next influence is a battle between education and media. So those who are able to go to a formal school and they have a strict environment, education models them. Those who are not in a formal school or they are not in a structured environment, media influences them. That's why some will become Malians or one million naira boys. Right now, Big Brother Nigeria is mentoring a whole generation in the discipline of immorality. So in another 10, 15 years, you are going to have a generation that are highly immoral. Nudity, sex, drugs, will be normal. So I've spoken about four spheres that need to be influenced. The next sphere that needs to be influenced is the celebration, how we enjoy life. How we enjoy life, is it taking us to do what is right or is taking us to do what is wrong? So I just spoke about Big Brother Nigeria. That actually is on the mountain of celebration. The mountain of media are your news. What is on the news? What are people talking about? One good thing in Nigeria, for instance, is that we'll be speaking a lot about the people recovering from COVID. Some other media will be presenting how many people have died. All of this impact on the soul. Now, when all of that has impacted on the child, the next thing it does is to step into business. So when he steps into business, he goes with this mindset. And then in business, he either is creating value or he is making money. And then finally, he steps into politics. He's now either creating transformation for the commonwealth or he is creating transformation for himself. Many, many politicians have been transformed. When they were on their own before politics, they could barely manage a car, they could barely pay their rent. But the moment they get into Abuja, they are not buying cars, they are buying factories, they are buying estates. That's transformation of the self because that is the agenda of politicians. But real political people are transformed people that want to transform. So what I am saying to the youth is your role is to go into all these seven spheres and offer true leadership. 
people that are about to die, people that are 40 years to their grave, 30 years to their grave, 10 years to their grave, five years to their grave, one year to their grave, one month to their grave, cannot plan for those of you that are just starting out life. Don't leave your life and destinies in the hands of people who are already preparing for their graves. Put your destiny in the hands of people who are preparing for their life. So what can you do? Number one, organize yourselves. Organize yourselves not in according to your football fan, your football club, Arsenal, Man U. Don't organize yourself according to your brand of drink. I like tequila, you like palm wine. Don't organize according to your church or your faith. Organize according to the spheres that I've listed for you. All of you that are interested in changing politics, begin to talk. Those of you interested in taking education, begin to talk. Those of you interested in changing the way family social systems run, begin to talk. And then within each sphere that I mentioned, as the discussions go on, begin to break yourself down into subparts. For instance, my body is a system. All right. To get anything done, I engage my whole body. But I have a head. I have a torso. I have limbs. Now, in my head are eyes. There is a nose. There is a tongue. In my head, there is a brain. Now, in my eyes also, there are different parts. There is the iris, there is the cornea, there is all of that and all of that. Okay, now to aid my eyes, I have another pair of glasses, which is external to me, but is is a catalyst to help me see or a facilitator to help me see. So it's the same way we have to create a superior system. What we are seeing in Africa right now is a system that has been created over years to deliver a particular set of results. And it is working excellently well. The Europeans that are the same it. system. The Europeans are the same system where 40,000 people, 15,000 people, 10,000 people governed 4 million people. Mm. It was a system. Absolutely, sir. How many people, dis- let me look for, let's talk Nigeria. How many people decide what should happen in Nigeria on a year to year basis? They are not up to 10,000 people. And they are everywhere. They are in the entertainment. They are in media, they are in government, they are in education, and they all come together to decide what happens. So how come 10,000 people are deciding the lot of 200 million people and all we can do is complain on social media? Because we have not learned to organize ourselves along meaningful lines. We organize for Arsenal, Arsenal won, so we do as we will kill cow. Uh, 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 Big Brother Nigeria is on. All of us are voting for our fan. That's organization, but for a wrong, not for a wrong, that's organization that is not meaningful for our big problem at the moment. So if you can organize along those seven, line, seven lines and begin to have discussions, brilliant. Let me give an example of politics. All right, sir. People think to contest for a seat is all that there is about politics. No, there are four things in politics. Number one, elective appointments, elective roles, people that seek election. There's appointing politics, people that get appointed into boards of organization, Mimasa, uh, Airways. They, then there is the think tank, the people that are thinking for what policies should speak, people that are Mr. Fix It. You don't see them, but they are the real brain behind what you, the hands and the legs and the mouth is doing. And then you have the advocates, the people making noise and drawing attention, like you uh, bring back our girls. That's advocacy. They are the ones that in, in foreign countries, they also are lobbyists, not Ghana must go lobbyists, but people that are giving information to legislators, are creating awareness to legislators, informing them, doing research for them and trying to influence them to take the right position. Now, you can, as, if you want to go into politics, you can do any of those. Now, if you're on the mountain of religion, let me give another example. You might be working at infrastructure. This is the way infrastructure should be in, uh, in religion. This is the way the amount of noise you can make. It might be Bible school that you are looking at. 
it might be uh, the curriculum. What curriculum should we be using? Education, same thing. Teacher training, funding. So if the youth can use technology at their disposal and the power of fresh thinking at their disposal, they can create new systems. Today, we are using Zoom. It's a new infrastructure. It's a new system. Absolutely. Okay? The, these kids, I mean, I was listening to uh, First Bank do fine fintech seminar yesterday on uh, AI and uh, blockchain. And they were saying that um, over 50%, if not more, at least 50% of fintech financial tel com uh, companies are driven by young people. Young people, they are the ones behind all this uh, money, on, mo uh, mobile money, money on your phone. So there is technology at their disposal, there is drive at their disposal, there is dissatisfaction at their disposal. What is not happening is it to be channel is, is the channeling. Now, as much as they have this, they would need mentorship and coaching. That is where my generation comes in. We are now to serve as fathers to you, as mentors to you, as coaches to you. And that is why I agreed to be here, to give a sense of direction. We are not to compete space with you. We are not to compete space with you. And one model I will give, and then you tell me how many minutes I, I have. For every youth, for every child, and for every family, listen carefully to this. This is a model I, I, I developed looking at a foremost human being. Between the ages of 0 to 12, the priority of the parents and the child is to discover the purpose of that child. What is that child going to uniquely contribute to humanity? That must be done by the age of 12. So what do you do? You expose that child to appropriate information, diverse information, and begin to see what that child like. Let him play ball, let him swim, let him debate, let him uh, look at science, let him look at literature, let him watch National Geographic. What are you doing? You are trying to pick a sense of what this child is about. At the age of 12, when the child is entering secondary school, you should not be able to channel him to begin to study, to give skill and knowledge to that which is innate and natural. Study and you do this the age of 12. Sorry? Study, study skill and knowledge. And knowledge and get the right attitude to back it up and the right value system. So between the ages of 12 and 30, you become proficient. So you have gone through secondary school, you've gone through tertiary education, and you've gone through post-tertiary. If you are going the academic route, you probably have done a PhD. If you are not going through, if you are going through a vocational, you have studied under everybody that can be studied. And by the age of 30, you are at the height of knowledge and experience. And that's exactly what happened with Jesus. By the age of 30, he had mastered everything that there was to master as far as script was concerned. At the age of 12, he had discovered. So, assuming every youth at the age of 30 is a master of his game, if it is an environmental issue, he's a master. You can't you can't dance around him. You can't fool him. If he's in politics, he's grounded. He can discuss anything at all. If it is uh, social matters, he's, as, he, he's grounded. He knows what his onions are about. If he's in entertainment, you can't run circles around him. He knows everybody at the age of 30 is a master's degree older, so to speak. So do you now do between the ages of 30 and 50, okay. you get the job done. In 20 years, everybody should be able to make a meaningful contribution. Everybody should be able to make a meaningful contribution. Now, what do you do after 50 years of age? Between 50 and 65, when most people are officially mandated to retire, you now begin to make other people in system. You may say, why am I saying all of this? I'm, I'm speaking to sustainability. The solution is leadership. The process is build a system. Now, what I am saying is how we will sustain it into time. So between 50 and 65, you mentor people in the system to become as proficient as you are and also to open up for new ideas and new possibilities. Then when they retire you at 65, you are not tired. You now go back home and begin to mentor your own grandchildren. Awesome. So that you have children in professional circles continuing 
and you have children in the family that are continuing the heritage i want to ask our leaders that gave us independence our leaders that led us in the 70s in the 80s where are their children why is it Muhammad Buhari that is still there? Where is his son? Wow. Where is his son? Wow. Where are their children? Everybody has political grandchildren. But you and I know the whole game is about personal transformation, at best family transformation. But what we are talking about is national transformation and continental transformation okay so when we organize ourselves we need to have a vision a vision is where are we going what do we want it to look like dubai is a vision a desert in the 70s people now go there to ski in summer can you imagine snow in the desert people skiing people coming from all over the world look at israel when Moses and Joshua led them, it was a barren land, but they turned it into a garden. Look at modern day Israel. In 1948, they went back. They've turned it into a garden. The power of vision. Look at Singapore. So the youth must dream. And if you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit says, what I will be doing in your life is to make you dream and think. Dream about the new Nigeria. What can it be like? Don't try to reinvent the days of the Coco Dome and the days of old, the good old days. There is nothing called the good old days. Every generation will always talk about the good old days. Wow. Let's look at what our brain matter can deliver. Let's engage imagination and science. Let's engage imagination and science. Dubai says, we are tired of people saying we are desert people. Now we will show you, not only have we created an oasis in the desert, we are now going to the moon. The first Emirati has gone to the moon. And I, I it's not going to the moon, Mars, basically, I think it's the moon or Mars now, outer space. But what really excites me is that the man says, I am doing this to inspire the next generation. Somebody did a survey. Before now, they used to ask every youth, what do you want to study? You say, I want to do business admin. As at two or three years ago, the, the, the street verdict was, I want to be a politician. Whether I go the way of a graduate or I go the way of a talk, I can always end up flying business class. I can always end up governor. I can always end up senator. It's, not, it's, it's just it's not. thank you for joining us for today the second part of this is going to come up next week but why we wait kindly like this page and if you are watching through YouTube please subscribe to our page and don't forget to share your comment with us we love you and with you, we believe that Africa is going to be transformed for better. Thank you.